helpful in, in dealing with a counter argument is conceding to some of your opposition's concern. Um, this often will demonstrate respect for their opinions. Um, and, you know, and also, too, it says, you know, you know I, I understand that, you know, X, Y, and Z. I, I, I get that this is an issue. I get that this works in this situation, but it doesn't work in that situation. So, you know, you don't want to just, you know, go at uh, the opposition full force. If you see that there's some gray space, if you think that there are some moments that, you know, somebody else has a good point to make, but, you know, and then, then you go into the but, uh, you know, make sure that you articulate that, okay? Um, so, research. You want to make sure that the research is woven into, uh, e you know, your paragraphs as you're moving along. Don't wait for one big, huge chunk to, to then put all your research in, okay? Try to, make, try to weave it into your conversation. Try to weave it into your argument. Um, and make sure that your research is used in such a way so that it's always supporting, you know, the claims that you're making. So if you make a claim, where's the research? Where's the data? Where's the proof? Or where's the logic? Okay? Every single time you make a claim. Um, and then make sure that you conclude. And one of the things that you want to do in the conclusion is you want to reemphasize the main points that you made in your paper. Uh, and so, you, you know, and conclusions are oftentimes very difficult because you feel like you're just kind of rewriting your introduction. But, you know, try to, try to wrap it up in such a way so that now you're synthesizing everything that you've just said and you're, you're concluding in a way that says, okay, now, you know, now, now that I've discussed X, Y, and Z, or this, that, and the other, um, you know, it, it's clear that, that this is the case, you know, whatever it is that your thesis is. Um, you can choose to reiterate a call to action or speculate on the future of your topic whenever that's possible. Um, but you're going to have a section called, you know, the limitation section that I mentioned earlier. So you can use that section uh, to talk about your, you know, what limited you in this project, and then what, if you were able to continue to do in the future, what would you do in the future? Okay. Um, and then one of the most important things that you want to keep in mind is to not raise new claims in your conclusion. All right? So don't get to the very end of your analysis and then all of a sudden raise some new, new claim. Because then you're going to leave me, whoever would be reading your paper, thinking, okay, wait a second, now you're, now you're bringing something up completely different and you're not supporting it and you're leaving me with this. Okay? All right. So there are a number of different rhetorical forms for argument, um, but I've only picked three to talk about because I think these are the three uh, most typical um, rhetorical strategies that we use when we're arguing. Uh, one is the Rogerian argument, and then deductive and inductive arguments. So the Rogerian argument is more of a conciliatory style. It oftentimes begins by summarizing opposing viewpoints. Uh, carefully considers the position of those that you disagree with. So, you know, a lot of times it opens up with those op opposing claims. You know, and then it discusses what their legitimate, legitimate concerns are. If they, you know, if you were in their place, how would you react to the situation? So it has a tone of, you know, this conciliatory from the beginning. But then it presents opposing uh, points of view. Obviously, it's going to present uh, opposing points of view accurately and fairly. You want to demonstrate respect for, you know, the ideas of whatever authors are disagreeing with you. Um, acknowledge the concerns that they share. Uh, point out to the readers how they'll benefit from the position that you're defining. And then present the evidence that supports your point of view. Okay, so this is, this is one way of approaching your argument. Um, I think in most cases... Uh, I don't think most of you will be doing it this way, but some of you, I can imagine some of you, this would make a, be a more logical form of argument for you. And we can talk a little bit more after this um, about what that would look like for each of you. Um, using deductive and inductive arguments. So deductive reasoning proceeds from a general premise or assumption to a specific conclusion. Okay, so it starts off kind of more generalized. And then as you go along, it gets more and more and more specific to the point where you get to your conclusion, then you're really nailing uh, whatever your argument is. 
it doesn't mean that your general premise is without a claim. It just means that it's a larger claim that you're then narrowing down into. Inductive reasoning proceeds from individual observations or experiences to a more general conclusion. And some of you are researching projects where uh, you are part of the community that you're researching or you are somehow involved in the community that you're researching. So this might be an example uh, of how you would perhaps first approach from your own individual observations or maybe from the data that you've collected in the field uh, and then come to a more general conclusion. Um, so deductive reasoning, a major premise which is a general statement, we've already talked about that a little bit, a minor premise which is related but more specific statement, so typically you would have that major premise and then you would have minor premises that would follow, uh, and then a conclusion that would be drawn from those premises. Um, we, most of us have a tendency to write this way, we just don't realize we're doing it this way. 